this is Lee, um, the illustrator for Entrepreneur Kid. Good to see you here. Um, I'm going to do a live video to celebrate our 100 backer for our Kickstarter campaign. For those who you haven't backed us yet, feel free to go to the link and check us out and back us um, at your level that you wanted to contribute, okay? So um, this time I'm going to talk about um, how I created um, Rachel's equipment which is something that Gladiator Lacrosse is selling um, and re in response to uh, author Erica Swallow who made, you know, who re read um, the whole story for Rachel. So I'm gonna bring you uh, a little bit to the back scene of how I created Rachel's equipment and maybe just show you a little bit the technique that we used um, both, you know, behind Illustrator, okay? Here we go. Um, all right, first of all, I want to show you this is a sketch, okay? So everything related to each page is actually, uh, has already been, yeah, illustrated here. And this is the full uh, render for the, the picture, right? For the whole thing. Um, so each page is um, illustrated in Illustrator. So basically, um, this is the cover. Yeah, this is the cover. Um, cover of Rachel Zeitz, teen lacrosse player. Um, who take her entrepreneurial course, entrepreneurship course, and realize that she can actually solve a problem that she really faces, you know, every day as a lacrosse player. So this is the illustration, and I wanted to show you maybe how I made the uh, both the goal and the rebounder. Okay, it's uh, fairly easy, but I'm gonna create on another yeah sheets so that I can just show you uh, how we made this. Yeah, in Illustrator, it's very cool um, that the whole um, outline and line is is fairly easy and uh, let's see with the shape tool with the shape tool as well we actually was able to you know create the rebounder with just like a rectangle shape yeah so I can start from here right as you can see for this rebounder you know the shape that I already created there are five uh, four points that I can actually start you know like just by um, clicking and drag to make the corners, you know, like to the level of radius that I want it. So I can make this, you know, the first outside line and I pick that color, you know, which is the black color. And inside there is also another, um, like the red um, border that is uh, on top of this um, layer. So what I'm gonna do is to make a copy of that. Copy, Command C, paste. So this is my other copy. But because I wanted to make it an outline, basically I make you know the shape to fit in on this uh, original shape first, and I'll turn it into an outline. Right now you don't see, but if we click you know to change the colors, yeah, to change the colors of the outline, you will see how yeah how the outline looks like. So right here, see we always have a small outline, but. We need to add the weight, so I'm going to introduce, yeah, uh, to add up the weight a little bit like that, right? See, we already created, yeah, the, the border around this. Uh, the same thing, you know, for the outline around, yeah, on the bottom. So basically, I'm going to use the paint tool and start drawing, um, you know, click and drag to make this curve line and click and click and drag again click to go back so yeah this is my it looks like a shape but if I click this you know switch tool on um, yeah on this part that I can basically just see the outline right now so again I'm gonna raise you know the um, the, the, the thickness of this layer uh, after I do that basically yeah just changing the color changing the color to a gray color. I'm gonna pick a gray color. Okay, so that is our rebounder. Yeah, for the. Layer. Why is it so important to get the goal and rebounder perfect in this case? The what? Why is it so important to get these these two things done perfect. right? Yeah. Well, the reason is because the whole book it is related to Rachel. You know, who herself is a lacrosse player, and also she invented her own type of. Uh, lacrosse equipment that you know can um, be more sturdy and and much you know like easier to use to a point for um, yeah for the lacrosse player so 
it is important to illustrate it you know right to the point that matches what her original book looks like you know her original like equipment looks like so it is important for us to capture that kind of um, yeah like feature you know or just like small details of how yeah how Rachel's equipment turned out to be okay so yeah let's turn this down a little bit and of course one would not let it stand so we have to make another one which is in the back yeah so pretty similar process we'll create um, create this kind of turns and then we'll go back yeah so Right here we have two, yeah, two stands that can, you know, let this whole um, equipment stand and sit. So, because you know it is, it has those like, outlines right here. I'm gonna set them to the back so that we can only see it from the back. Yeah, so perfect that way. Um, now some of you would wonder, you know, how did we create those like perfect straight lines and also make everything perfectly fit in this frame? Okay, it's actually a fairly easy task. So I'm gonna just show you how to do a clipping mask in Illustrator, which is a tool that we use. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a bunch, right, a bunch of white lines as we illustrate it, right? So the white line gonna be a little thing, skinnier, thinner. Yeah, a very cool tool. Yeah, I would show you is how to make, you know, continuous copy. Yeah, with out holding your key and just keeping copying. Okay, so. For those um, maybe who are new to Illustrator, you know, this might be a tool you wanted to use. Okay, let's see. First of all, I will hold Option key and uh, just like, just drag a line and then, you know, copy it once. Now, if I copy, I can hit Command D, you know, like this and look at how the, you know, how the lines was transferring and making equal distance among, you know, all those lines. And now we created the horizontal, you know, horizontal lines. What does Control D do? Control D is basically repeating what you have recently just copied in the exact same distance, facing the same direction that is, you know, that is going toward. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a cool tool when it comes to creating pattern too. Okay. So now let's do the horizontal vertical lines. After I create this vertical line, I do a similar thing. I hold option, you know, and then make a copy. Hold shift as well to make it straight, okay? And command D, see what is happening. All right. So, okay, so basically this is, you know, the, the web, right? The part that we needed, yeah, to, to make it happen for the middle, yeah. But we still have, you know, a lot of the inside part that doesn't look like that. So we have to create the outside frame, okay? The outside frame. Um, so how would, how would we create outside frame? First of all, using the pen tool again, um, you know, draw a box, looks like, looks like the goal, okay? However, it, you know, has to go inside, yeah, it has to go inside. Right now you cannot see it well because it's also in white. Now if I change the color into, you know, a, a red color, you know, especially a red color. Um, yeah. And also add up the signet, as you can see. Yeah, I'm already creating this, you know, like outside rebounders. And you will say, how, how can I get rid of this part, right? How can I get rid of that part? Because this is not what we see in the real illustration. Um, you know, you can get rid of every part as you want. Um, basically, we are going to create a clipping mask on top of this goal um, so that all the lines that is outside can be hidden, but then um, the clipping mask is in the clipping mask, it will be revealed, okay? So what we do is to make a copy and copy it into exact same spot. So Command C to copy, Command F to place it in the exact same spot. Right now, because we have two layers, I'm gonna hide a layer, command three to hide a layer. Now I'm gonna select everything and right click to make a clipping mask. Boom, right? So right now we have this whole thing and reveal the original layer. And as you can see, it's already, you know, it, it already has this yeah, layer like that. Um, because we haven't done a good job on the bottom, okay? Yeah, it still has something missing. So can we click into it and add it? For sure, right? So let's click into this layer and keep adding more. And of course, adding, you know, getting all the lines stretched out, yeah, to the same position like that. 
So the same thing for this. Oh, the clipping layer yeah, still the, works. Yeah, the clipping layer is still inside and works perfectly like that, right? So this is, you know, the goal bun yeah, goals. And, uh, you know, in order to make everything a little bit, yeah, like around, we can still keep editing, you know, the, the corner of the goal, for example, too, you know. Uh, the CC, Adobe CC has those amazing tools, yeah, for us to use just to create, uh, you know, a better uh, line like that. Okay, so, uh, all right, this is, you know, how we created the equipment. Okay, this is how we created the equipment. I'm gonna group everything together now. Um, yeah, some of you may wonder, you know, after we group, now we wanted to make it a little smaller, right, rather than big like that. So when we make it a little smaller, problem will occur is that, you know, everything will turn out to be thicker and there's no, you know, like no gap, like similar gaps like that uh, from our previous picture anymore. The reason is because this is a stroke. Because you th select a thickness of the stroke, no matter what, the thickness will kept, you know, um, like in whatever size you already, you know, put it into. So. If I re, you know, if you wanted to keep the original, like you know, thickness, come like proportion with everything, then what you need to do is to outline all the strokes. Okay, so in order to outline, we can go and click on objects and path and outline stroke. So basically, all the outlines, you know. Uh, yeah, let's click into it. Um, yeah, all the all of the all the whole thing is outlined. Now, if I go down, you know, like to whatever size, as you can see, the original proportion would still be kept. Okay, so that's another thing we need to pay attention to. Yeah, so um, you know, this is how we created the sports equipment. Yeah, another thing I wanted to show you is probably the choice of Rachel's typeface. Okay. Uh, the reason we are choosing a different typeface, you know, for every entrepreneur because we want a typeface also resonate, you know, with what the personality and also the theme of the book looks like. So for Rachel, because her, um, yeah, her whole thing is about, you know, sports equipment that she wanted, you know, like we wanted to deliver a kind of, you know, sports, um, you know, efficient, you know, passion, that kind of, um, yeah, like, like typeface uh, for Rachel. So we choose a kind of design that looks like a lot of those, you know, like, I guess basketball, or football, you know, players who have the type um, printed in the back of the shirt, you know, like curve that way and put a number on the bottom, if you guys recall any of those design, okay? So um, right now I'm gonna show you guys how, you know, uh, maybe to create one of the typeface, yeah. Um, and then we'll see. So as you can see, for this type, you know, it's fairly easy. Uh, it's only just an outline, and then we have some outside outline as well. Yeah. In order to make this happen, I think definitely we can use the trace tool. You know, use the pen tool. So for example, if I wanted to create the simplest H, right? So I go down and create a shape look like the red um, color. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show you guys. Yeah. In, for those who have created, you know, the, the, the outline, uh, maybe in the beginning, the outline is actually a very straight, you know, and as you can see, if I make it a little thicker, yeah, the outline is actually very straight and very, um, I guess, like a square looking thing, but we do want it a round, you know, friendly kind of type look. So we come over here, we choose a round corner and a round cap, you know, so that this way, as you can see, some difference has been made, right, like that. So now, if I would make another, yeah, copy um, to make the H, yeah, I have another stroke, and then I connect this both, you know, and basically an H is made, yeah. So in order to, you know, to do a border around it, and I'm gonna just trace around, yeah, trace around the border, um, yeah, I we can do this all in the beginning uh, because later we can start changing the border or the make it you know add it to the little better. Okay, but now it's not perfect, but we can use the direct selection tool, keep working towards yeah the goal, and um, so that all the lines will be aligned perfectly. Yeah, so move over, move out a little bit like that. Um, Okay, oops, yeah. 
So yeah, let's select this whole thing. Um, yeah, this looks like the H. First of all, I need to group the middle H, group the middle H, and then I'll select both of them and align them in the middle. So now they will align perfectly. So as you can see, some of my stroke is not aligned perfectly. So I will keep re yeah keep editing them to a point where they can yeah match. Um, and over here too, like that. Okay, um, and we don't have to select this thick, right? Maybe eight or seven even. Yeah, like that. All right, yeah, so... Dan says, that looks like a lot of work. How did it take, how long did it take to create the illustration exactly. for the entire book? So, so okay, but I wanted to show you, this is a lot of work, yeah, for the, for the letters specifically wanted to design. But, you know what? We find a type that look exactly like that. I'm going to show you, yeah. So, basically... This type, yeah, I can show you. This type looks like exactly like an outline, yeah, but it's just not to a point that looks like a thick outline. I'm gonna type uh, A C H E L Rachel's name here, okay? Um, and we're going to select this type, which is called Bonji outline. See? Okay. So. As you can see, we already have this bungee outline. Let, let, let's select a little bigger type, yeah. So it's gonna be like this big. So see, it's interesting, right? So the good thing about, you know, like designing typeface is if you can find the right typeface, you know, which you can save a lot of time and everything, it's just like if you have to make it fit exactly like what you do here, we have to do another, you know, type of work, another round of work, just a little twist and adjustment. Okay, so because I want this kind of thickness going on, no matter what, this is only keeping this one point or two point, you know, like thickness, I'm going to select it and just using the outline rather than the fill in, okay? This is the fill in and this is the outline. I'm going to use the outline because once I turn it in here, as you can see, after I increase my outline, I can actually create, yeah, create this kind of thicker and thicker, yeah, right, um, difference. Okay, I'm gonna cho choose two point like at this point, but the outline creates some you know like problem as you can see for the A, yeah, right here we have this like outline you know meeting each other and not creating a perfect um, yeah kind of corner. So how to avoid this is that we can choose the cap by using you know a round cap and a round corner as well as the inside align the stroke inside will solve the problem as you can see. Right, we already solved that problem by yeah, um, so by doing that. But at this point, you know, um, since we don't need any change or anything, so basically, in order to avoid that kind of you know change in the future, we can just outline the whole thing again. Um, so we will create outline for this typeface, outline stroke. Right now, everything is you know outlined on its own, and. Yeah, so each letter, uh, as later you can see, will have, you know, uh, its own kind of, yeah. Um, and color. how long did it take you to create the whole book beyond the typeface and just generally illustrating? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, for so from this stage, yeah, from this stage, it's fairly, I guess, fast, because um, I usually just spend like two hours, you know, three hours most to just, picture every you know like frame how it looks like to begin with yeah what the composition would be and how much detail I wanted to illustrate it you know put it in there um, and then each book you know like each page probably will take several at least several hours you know to illustrate to to a point that fit everything um, and uh, you know for Rachel's I guess for Rachel's book we started in the beginning um, yeah, we started in the beginning, like, you know, like just getting everybody's face out there. But for the editing of the detail, we still have, you know, like we still have a lot um, to, to edit and to go. So um, for each page, I think it's probably maybe four to five hours of work, you know, depend on the, yeah. Four depend, to five. Yeah, four to five hours of work, uh, depend on the complexity and everything. Um, and on top of that, we would edit, you know, like everything a little bit too. Yeah, so together, I guess like, yeah maybe several you know weeks yeah several weeks um and is this her pages. palette yes yeah so this is her palette 
because we selected you know Rachel's um, color as red uh, she herself is a very ambitious and competitive you know girl so um, we use red you know to show her passion and as well as you know the competitiveness of Rachel um, so this uh, color palette definitely include a lot of the red you know color and some green too because she happened to play you know always on the um, yeah, like, you know, outside in the nature of his green. So we use this color palette to resonate, you know, for what Rachel is. Um, yeah, Do you ever go outside of the color palette? Not really. Yeah, I try not to um, because that is an important thing, you know, to keep everything consistent and look consistent throughout. Um, if I do, I will add it in a color palette so it makes sure it appears in other, you know, places as well. Yeah. Um, some, you know, like some, for example, the shadows we create for each specific role that we don't consider those belong to part of this because it's just, you know, um, generated from the main color and we just go one low, you know, one color lower. So for example, she's on the grass right here. I choose this color, you know, up here. And when it comes to her, you know, shadow, I just come down to the color and come, you know, like go down like several levels to choose the similar kind of color that will fit for the thing, but also looks like a shadow, you know, look. Yeah. So we don't consider the shadow as the, um, yeah, it, as in the color palette at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That should be it. Yeah. I'll, do we have any more questions in the comments? Um, yeah. If not, you had talked about patterns yes. a little bit. Where is another place in the book where patterns are kind of a big deal in each of the books? Definitely. So um, for the front and back matter, we actually created you know, a pattern that can go and connect with each, um, with the cover and the front page in the back as well. So I wanted to show you probably two examples right here, okay? First of all is, um, you know, the inside page the first you know like inside page of Rachel Rachel turns her passion into a business and for this page it is the pattern page that will stick if you guys can imagine you know that can stick to the hard cover yeah I mean we don't have maybe any examples here maybe pull one of the this one yes no the other yeah okay okay say for example for hardcover binding book right yeah so this part as you guys can see Usually, you know, that will tie with this uh, hard cover. Um, it is, you know, like the pattern page that we're designing. Yeah, for this front page is going to be um, the, the second, you know, like the inside page for the, for the cover. Yeah, so basically we're designing a pattern using the product that each of the kid entrepreneur have actually uh, invented to illustrate, you know, how, um, yeah, how this book looks like, including, including the color, you know, that is mainly, yeah, appeared on there on the page so for Rachel as you can see it is red it has the sports equipment you know that she is yeah she invented through lacrosse um, gladiator look gladiator look gladiator lacrosse yeah uh, and so for Gabby as I can show you um, yeah for Gabby these are the bows that she actually has invented yeah so um, there's new kind of bow, you know, the bow tie is the new version that is will, will come out pretty soon, yeah. So for this version, you know, as you can see, we really wanted, you know, every detail of the book, you know, like uh, try to deliver the best um, concept and the best image, you know, and visual for each entrepreneur. And one final question here in the comments, are any of the illustrations inspired from photographs? Yes, yes very um much so for some very specific things yeah i can show you um for right uh, for gabby's for example okay uh yeah so for gabby especially especially this thing which is the part the one that we just created yesterday actually you know um we have you know we do have a lot of the individual photos being sent by gabby's mom Okay, Gabby's mom sent us the photo of who helps Gabby, you know, during the packing party. Um, different, you know, relatives and friends and family. Um, they send us individual 
uh, photos of how each person looked like, right? And that is important to capture because Gabby's mom wanted to feature, you know, each friend and relatives who have helped along the way, you know, so that they can see their image in Gabby's book in the future. Um, so we do, you know, we do use those pictures, yeah, and receive those images to be fully illustrated through the book, you know, so that everybody could um, be featured, um, you know, like feel happy, you know, being featured in the book too, yeah. Um, that is right, but you know the overall composition when it comes to like how we decide and where to put what you know who will stand to what position and everything. Well, definitely you know is more creative and imaginative because we want everything look balanced. You know, like like yeah, united and together like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, do we have any more questions? If not, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Um, so this is our second, you know, live video about illustration. We have two more to go. So we are halfway through our Kickstarter campaign. Um, really, without your help, we cannot make it, you know, there. So if you haven't backed us yet, please go Kickstarter, um, you know, find us and, and back us and your support and, you know, would be highly valued in, the, uh, in this whole process. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.